Hello writers, come write with me. My name is Michaela Greenwood. I create worlds for mind adventures. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Write with Michaela. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can go on this journey with me. Today we're going to discuss metaphors, similes, and analogies. These are types of symbolism. Symbolism refers to the use of an action, object, or name to represent an idea or quality. Essentially, it is the act of taking something that's concrete and associating it with a symbol to give a new or greater significance. As writers, we use symbolism to explain an idea or concept to our readers in a poetic manner without saying things outright. Symbolism allows us as writers to make our stories more complex. People use symbolism in everyday life, like life is like a rose. So a rose can represent a uh, romance. A butterfly can symbolize transformation. And a dog can represent loyalty. Today we will discuss three types metaphors, similes, and analogies. And in a couple of Tuesdays from now, we will discuss personification, hyperbole, metamy, and irony. Let's start with a metaphor. A metaphor is a creative way of describing something by comparing it to something else that is not literally true. A simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of one or more things with another thing of a different kind, used to make a description more emphatic or vivid. An analogy is a comparison of two otherwise unlike things based on resemblance of a particular aspect. Now, so far, those three terms sound very familiar, or sorry, very similar. And I know you are glad there's no test on this. So let's take a deeper dive. While all three make comparisons, similes use as or like to directly create the comparison. Now let's look at some metaphors. Life is a highway. He is a shining star. She is an early bird. Now, Life is not literally a highway, but the metaphor gives us the feeling that it moves forward and sometimes it does so very rapidly. Simile can also compare using so or than. So you have as, like, so, than when you do the comparison. But let's turn the above three metaphors into similes. Life moves fast like a highway. His talent shines like a shining star. She gets up in the morning like an early bird. So you see, those two things, metaphors and similes, are very similar. That's why the definitions are very similar. And when I read the definitions, there you didn't hear anything about as or like or anything like that. It just said compare two things, compare two things. So... Uh, don't worry about what, which one you use. The purpose of an analogy is not merely to show, but also to explain. For this reason, an analogy is more complex than a simile or a metaphor, which aim only to show without explaining. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use similes and metaphors to make an analogy, but usually analogies have additional information to get their point across. We use metaphors, similes, and analogies often in literature and poetry because they help the writer paint a picture for the reader's imagination. They help readers better understand abstract concepts like love, death, beauty, and courage. They are useful to explain an unfamiliar concept or idea by linking to the idea of something similar, which can help the reader better comprehend what you, the writer, are trying to say. 
Why am I telling you about this? Well, when we create a fantasy or a fiction world, one of the best ways to help our readers understand the narrative or the story when we are dealing with something unknown like magic or advanced science, we can use an analogy or a simile or a metaphor. In The King's Daughter, I have one character ask another character about her fire spell. The character admits that he knows she can make fire and make it hot, but she would need to make it lava hot for their purposes in the story. And he asked if she can make it lava hot. My readers may not know exactly how hot lava is, but most everyone knows that is much hotter than boiling water. So I'm letting my readers know the amount of power or at least the amount of heat intensity and this is much, much better than me looking up the temperature of lava and the character asking if she can make a fire 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Especially if there is no measurement in Fahrenheit in my setting. In my Miyacha series, I need a magical fire or heat as hot as a sun drop to fight a certain magically created creature. Again, there's no reason to look up how hot the sun is for my reader to get the meaning. Let's think of Kilty for a moment. In the story we are reading together, after she received a snake bite or a lashing from the ravenous Vaporis, I described her leg as stiff and swollen. But I could have said it was hard as a rock while it was bloated like a pregnant pig. City of the Ancients is still a rough draft, and I may or may not change that, but that is my choice. It depends on how much emphasis I want the injury, or how vivid I want the injury to look or seem. Now, let's create some similes together. I'll give you the first part, and you finish it. For example, if I said it was as hard as blank, then you could fill in a rock or something else. Now, when you're writing your story, remember your setting or your time frame. Something can't be as hard as a brick wall if you have no bricks. For this exercise, there is no setting, so you can use whatever you want. We're just trying to do a little exercise here, a little fun. Okay, number one. I'll go slow so you can write it down. As soft as and then you fill in the blank. Number two, as light as. Number three, as beautiful as. Number four, as delicious as. Number five, as dedicated as. Number six, as cold as. Number seven, as difficult as. Number eight, as limber as. Number nine, as tall as. Number 10, as sturdy as. Now, pause the video and fill in the blanks for your similes. Don't forget my favorite tool, alliteration. You don't have to use that tool, but don't forget it. Okay, pause the video. Welcome back, writers. Let's fill in the blank. There's no right or wrong answers here. This is just fun stuff. And it helps you to think when you start writing your stories about, you know, how you can compare things or, or make the readers understand your points. So th this is the fun stuff that prepares us for our writing. Number one, as soft as a silky slipper. Number two, as light as a leaf. Many of you may have said a feather, and that's perfectly fine. Number three, as beautiful as a bouquet of flowers, or as beautiful as a rose. Number four, as delicious as a warm Belgian waffle on a very cold day. Number five, as dedicated as a champion runner 
three feet from the finish line or as dedicated as a worker bee. Number six, as cold as a snow-capped mountain in Antarctica. Number seven, as difficult as rocket science would be to a first grader. Number eight, as limber as a guru, a yoga guru. Number nine, as tall as towering, a towering tree. Number 10, as sturdy as an oak tree. Now I'm sure your answers were different. So leave a comment below using your favorite simile from our list. If you converted one of the above similes to a metaphor and put it in the comments as well. So in, if you convert it, you're going to take out the as and take out the like part of it. Okay. If you need a little bit more fun before Friday, you can visit my website and read character bios. Have bios for most of the characters in Miatcha 1, White Witch Pending. I have bios for half the team in Operatives, and I have five characters so far for the City of the Ancients. Go to www.bymckella.com. The by is spelled B-Y. And my name is spelled M-Y-K-E-L-A. If you're enjoying reading bios, leave that in the comments as well. If you hit like and subscribe and the bell notification, then we will continue to write together. I will see you on Friday where it is story time and I will read chapter 14 of the City of the Ancients, West Point Villa. Also, I will see you Tuesday for more writing jargon and or another writing prompt. I want to discuss adjectives and adverbs, but I will make it fun. Yes, I will give definitions, just like I did today. But I will also read two scenarios with adjectives and adverbs. You will enjoy this. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your participation. If you know someone who would like this video, then please share it with them. This is McKella with Write with McKella. Bye for now.